The New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. Wow. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about Pastor Jamal Bryant suggesting that his church grow weed. Now, I presume they're not just going to be growing it. They're going to be selling it. Now, full disclosure, I'm one of those guys that's against drugs. Drugs are bad. That's me. That's pretty much how I operate. However, even if you are a proponent of weed and legalizing weed and cannabis and whatever else comes from growing that, even if you are a proponent of that, I think most people would be against having weed be involved in the church. All right. I go to church occasionally, depending upon what's going on. You know, if I'm out of town, grandma's house, something like that, family, friend. Okay. I go to church, but I'm not normally a church guy. But if I go to your church and I smell weed smoke, I know I'm in the wrong place. And before I go any further, let's roll the clip. If you want to see this clip in full link will be in the description, but let's go ahead and roll it. I'm looking for people that smell like weeds. <laughs> no, 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 really is <laughs> new birth is the largest land owning black church in America. Wow. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males. They're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, th th this is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they grow weed at the church, where do I join? Yes. I don't need no pamphlet for him. Okie dokie. So that is your man, Pastor Jamal Bryant, talking about growing weed at the church. Getting some black boys from Bankhead. And by the way, let, let me just come back so you can see me clearly. He is the pastor of New Birth Baptist Church in Stonecrest, Georgia. That's about 30 to 45 minutes away from downtown Atlanta. Bankhead, that's on the west side, right? So that's not really that close to New Birth, first of all. Second of all, um, this church was Eddie Long's church before he died of cancer or whatever he had. And the reason why I say it like that is because Eddie Long was probably one of the worst human beings to ever touch grass. He allegedly abused boys systemically. Like he had a program for boys to try and raise them up and do right by them, but he was really abusing them serially. So that guy burning in hell somewhere, but that's a different story and I digress. Pastor Jamal Bryant has succeeded Eddie Long at that very same church, New Birth in Stonecrest. Now, um, Jamal Bryant is no stranger to controversy. This was the same guy that said these H's ain't loyal. He has baby mamas, ex-wives, all kind of stuff going on. A lot of things he has in his personal life. Aside from all of that, we at the church, come on, man. You're electioneering for Raphael Warnock. You got all kind of skeletons in your closet. You're at New Birth Baptist Church. You should be trying to fix that church's image rather than coming in there talking about smoking and selling weed. But then again, maybe the church is known for this kind of stuff for things that don't make any sense. You just kind of add into it personally. If I was minister, pastor, reverend or whatever, I would not be engaged in stuff like this, but Hey, I guess whatever goes, goes. And this guy's pretty much perpetuating that type of lifestyle, that type of ideology. And I don't understand. It's like, okay, you're talking about farming. That's a different story. You're out there in Stonecrest. You should be able to find some land somewhere and farm. If you're talking about growing food, wouldn't it be more important talking about growing things you can actually use? Like, I don't know, veg vegetables, talking about raising livestock, farm animals, stuff like that. Because I see farms all over Georgia. Okay, Atlanta is not just the, the end-all, be-all of Georgia. There's plenty of farmland. I live right here on the line. When I cross the line, I'm seeing cows and horses and chicken and everything else. Just hanging outside because not really a big deal. That should be your primary focus. If you're talking about the ecosystem and learning how to farm and knowing how to grow things, focus on food, focus on things that make a difference. We're talking about your nutrition, but weed, that sounds like a money grab to me. And are you going to be able to sell weed, Mr. 501c3, tax exempt church? Are you going to be able to do that? Huh? It's, it's like, what are we even talking about? Why would you say a thing like that as a pastor? 
like I said, I'm a guy that's against drugs. Drugs are bad. I'm not for legalizing weed because I know where that goes. Because, you see, this is, this is, this is my exact point about legalizing weed. When you have weed in the taboo space, it kind of is, is left untouched by guys like Jamal Bryant, by the pastor, preacher man, by the regular normie, uh, white collar, square type guy, kind of leave it be. And the guys that kind of want to be living on the edge, they'll mess with it, but it's not really a really serious thing. It's in the taboo space. But when you remove from that taboo space, when it's taken away from the taboo space, you're going to have morons like this coming there talking about let's smoke weed the church. What's next? You're going to smoke crack at the pool pit? I mean, because that's, that's where it goes. You see what I'm saying? If weed was not just legalized everywhere, this not be a conversation. Nobody would come out there and say, let's sell weed at the church, if not for weed being legalized. So then the next thing will be kind of taboo, kind of an iffy space. And once that is taken from that iffy space, it's going to be just normal. It'd be normal to shoot heroin. You already have the the precursors for that, the safe shooting spaces, the shooting galleries or whatever, needle exchanges, so on and so forth, not enforcing any kind of laws against using heroin. So the next step would be, okay, let's sell heroin on the street corner. That's where we're at. And it's to the point where it's like that now with the fentanyl all over the place. Number one, cause of death for adults age 18 to 45 because the border's wide open. You're pretty much legalizing it, letting it go on, letting it happen, not really trying to enforce anything. And a nation that's drugged up and messed up is not going to be able to compete on a global level. That's why we're being flooded by China with all these fentanyl chemicals that get sent to the drug cartels south of the border, north of the border as well. That's why we're getting flooded with it because they know that if we're high on drugs, distracted, uh, then they got the TikTok and stuff like that, and they pump garbage in there to keep us further distracted. It's a it's a method of trying to destroy us from within by our own hand. And this guy, Jamal Bryant, should be aware of that, but yet he's perpetuating it, talking about or be getting them black boys from bank hit. Man, look, you know what I see? I see an opportunist. I see a charlatan. I see a jet lag preacher, which is far too common in America, not just in the black community, but in America, you got all these, I won't name anybody's name. You got these churches that kind of operate like cults, okay? And just, and I'm not even against religion necessarily. I'm not against Christianity, but I see far too many people Far too many organizations take advantage of people that want to find more about the word, that want a Christian relationship. They, they, they take advantage of those people and lead them in the wrong direction. They lead their flock in the wrong direction. Jamal Bryant is just one example of it. He was doing that when he was in Baltimore. Now he's doing that out here in the metro Atlanta area. And anybody that supports this, you got to be ashamed of yourself. In the church, if you want to be a regular weed smoker out in the general public, at a dispensary or a place that's more appropriate for it. Okay. I, I'm not even really tripping. I wish you wouldn't do it, but I'm not really tripping about it at a church. Come on. This is 100% ridiculous, but I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what said you, how do you feel about pastor Jamal Bryant talking about you should be able to grow and possibly sell weed at a church? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. I think this man is absurd, ridiculous, but this ain't nothing new for Jamal Bryant. This is the same guy that said, these H's ain't loyal, talking about that Chris Brown song. He said that during a sermon. This is the same guy that took over for Eddie Long, who was probably the worst human on planet Earth. The worst human on planet Earth. If he wasn't the worst, he was at the very top. A, a, a pastor, a preacher man, talking about he wanted to save all these young black boys or really was abusing them serially. I mean, just a, a complete mess. I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad that guy is deceased. This dude, Jamal Bryant, man, I don't really, I don't understand the motive. I don't understand the thought process. Maybe he's just not really in tune with the work that he preaches. And maybe it's more about a financial incentive trying to raise money rather than trying to be a man of God, which is what he should be doing rather than doing stuff like this on the podcast. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe.
Peace.